I don't want to keep you guys waiting too long because we do have like a lot of things I want to cover. Um, so hi, welcome. My name is Lydia Gibson, and this is the first meeting of the R for Data Science Online Learning Community Cohort Nine um, of the R for Data Science Online Book Oh R for Data Science Book Club. <laughs> um, so thank you all for joining today. Um, like today, I want to go over some basics for like folks that may not have um, used R much and like who aren't really familiar with like the R for DS book clubs. So if you are like if you're a veteran, bear with me. Um, but yeah, this first meeting will be like a really mostly an introduction, and I'll maybe briefly mention what like definitely talk about the book but I don't think I'm gonna go over chapter one at all today. So let me start screen sharing. Oh, and also we'll do introductions. I figure it'd be good to leave it towards the end because we might have people who join in the middle and I wanna be able to make sure we're able to say hi to them. Um, so, so I'm gonna start screen sharing now. I'm gonna share my entire screen. I got a couple of things that I wanna share. Okay. So you guys can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, let me move this. Okay, so yeah, and again, welcome for the R for Data Science book club. Um, so first I'm gonna show you, these are the notes and these will be the companion for the book R for Data Science by Hadley Wickham, Mine Sudinkaya Renda, and Garrett Rollmond. And the companion, this companion is available at this site r4ds.github.io book club slash r4ds and this website is being developed by the r4ds r4ds online learning community and you can you can um find the community at this link r for data site r for data site.com and also you could join the community online on slack at well this is like the page to join or log into Slack, but that is at r4ds.io slash join. Oh, and by the way, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to my friend Ken, who will be helping me put some of the links in the chat. So thank you, Ken. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah, there's that. And yeah, so just with regards to the R4DS online learning community, I do want to kind of go over the code of conduct a little bit, um, especially like kind of our pledge where it's like in the interest of fostering an open and welcoming environment, we as learners, mentors, and administrators pledge to make participation in our community a harassment free experience for everyone, regardless of age, body size, disability, ethnicity, gender identity and expression, level of experience, nationality, personal appearance, race, religion, or sexual identity and orient orientation. And I just kind of feel like it's important to kind of start with that because we're definitely a community for everyone who wants to learn, like everyone and not excluding anyone. So just wanted to also start there. Um, so yeah, so for this book club, we'll be going over the second edition of the R for Data Science book and you can get this book at r4ds.hadley.nz. I don't think I gave you that link, Ken, but <laughs> you could type it in. Um, so yes, yeah, so this, this is the second edition of the book um, where the first edition is kind of where this community got its name for. Um, and it's kind of the place that a lot of people learning are like to start. I personally have never read the book yet, not through to the beginning. But this is so this will be like a really fun experience for me as well. Um, so yeah, just there's the welcome. And then when you go to the preface for the second edition, it kind of tells you some things about this book that are different from the first. Um, some of the highlights were like the first part, um, telling you the goal of this section, um, tell you the rough details of the whole game of data science. Before you dive into the details, the second part is called visualize. Um, third part is called transform. Fourth part, 
is called import. There's the program part, which is the same from the other book. Um, this book removes the part on modeling. And there's also the communicate part, which is the same from the previous book, except that now they're featuring Quarto instead of our markdown. Um, one note I want to make for our book club, we're still going to be using our markdown. So I do have, um, let me see where I put those resources. I do have some resources for folks who may not be familiar with our markdown. There's like a cheat sheet, but also in like the first edition of the book, in their communicate section, you can find some stuff about our markdown. That's okay, but yeah, so chapter 20 C 27 of the first edition of the book may give you some helpful tips about using our markdown um, if you want like help while like working on the notes. Okay, so yeah, so that's the book. The Slack and let me see. So there are a couple other things I wanted to go over. I made like a little note document for myself to kind of make sure. Um, so yeah, so you have the website for our for ds Also, you can find our for ds um, several places like LinkedIn, or on Twitter, Mastodon, YouTube, GitHub, and Slack. Um, I do want to go kind of show the Slack a bit really quick, just so you kind of, um, if you're not familiar with it, you kind of know how to navigate your way through it. So. Okay, so this is the R4DS Slack. You can tell by that little the icon up there, and it says R4DS. Here I have opened the R4DS Book Club tab. And yeah, so this was the most recent post where the Slack bot let you know that our meeting is starting now. These meeting links are posted 10 minutes ahead of the start time. Um, our club will be starting at Sunday, will be held Sundays, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, let me see what else they say. I think that's it. But yeah, also I did post some of the same links I have on this um, sheet you see on my other other side of my screen. I did post some of them here, and they're also in. Oops, it's also pinned up here. So here at the top you see. There are five messages that are pinned. One of them is this one I have here, which has getting started with R, where you can download R, download our studio, or posit cloud if you prefer working um, through a browser. There's a cheat sheet for the R Studio IDE, one for a markdown, and then Posit has like a ton of other cheat sheets for their packages. And also, if you don't don't have one already, creating a GitHub account. Um, or then you can also download GitHub Desktop. I personally don't know how to use it, but I imagine it's very helpful. Um, there's like some documentation on getting started with Git, and also you'll need to download Git. And there's Happy Git and GitHub for the R user, which is a helpful book, as well as a Git cheat sheet. And then some other things to note. So there's a link for the book. That's also up here. There's a link for the shared slides, which are those same slides I was showing you. And then also one of the great things, you can volunteer to lead a discussion. So we're cohort nine. And if you click that, it'll take you to this spreadsheet where you can write your name as like, sorry, to volunteer to present one of the chapters of the books. Um, Actually, I'm gonna put this in the chat right now. But yeah, so feel free if you see a chapter that sounds interesting to you, even if it's like several weeks ahead, write your name down now that you want it and yeah. And then you can present. And also one of the last things, also there's the other, this other folder, which has the first edition of the book club, and the first edition of the book, sorry, um, those slides for that book. And then also then for the second edition of 
the book. Okay, so I have that. Yeah, so those are the things I wanted. Oh, that's not all the things I wanted to go over. There's also the help channels. So when you're here, you can always like search for like different help channels. So for example, there's like help our general, oh, chat our general, help our explore rainbow. There's a GitHub help channel, a database help channel, um, even our markdown help channel. And you can join them. I think I'm already in that one. <laughs> yeah, but when you highlight it, it'll click. Well, if you're not already in it, it'll click say join, but I already joined them. But that's a cool thing to know about. Also, yeah, there's also generally some like chat channels, like there's chat bar general. Let me see. Yeah, so if you start typing in chat, it'll bring up examples of the chat channels. Same thing if you do help, it brings up a list of the help channels. And then also, of course, there's the book clubs. Yeah, so there's a ton of book clubs. We're again, we're going to be reading R for data science. So that is book underscore club dash r4ds okay and then yeah as i mentioned again if you want to leave the discussion we're cohort nine you just put your name in that spreadsheet now okay i'm gonna go over to the github repo and kind of talk about some of that stuff okay so Say you're on this page and you want to get to the GitHub repo. If you see like right up there, it's kind of small, but like there's that the GitHub like Octocat thing, and you can press that and it'll take you to the notes. So these are the notes for the book. Um and yeah, so this will be the second club reading this. No, I think we're the third club that's reading the second edition. There's cohort seven and cohort eight that are going on right now. Um, but yeah, the book, it's I think about 30 chapters actually. Let me go back to that. Yeah, so the book has like 30 chapters actually. So we'll probably be reading it well over six months. If we're reading a chapter a week. Um, and yeah, so because there's a lot of chapters, there's a lot of files in this repo. So I'm going to kind of show you um, a template repo just for so it's not too overwhelming to look at this one. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of the general setup of the book clubs where you'll have like the name of the book club, and then you'll have that meeting schedule. Let me see. Yeah, you'll have the name of the book club. Um, you'll have the book, you'll have um, access to the Slack and the notes as well. And then you have the meeting schedule. Again, we're gonna be cohort nine. We're meeting Sundays, 1900 CST. Um, also, you'll be able to link to the videos that are um, once we start, um, well, actually, even this video is going to be recorded and put on YouTube in a playlist for R4DS Cohort 9 specifically. Um, but yeah, within R4DS, the online kind of. Oh, hi, Jeremy. Okay, so within, um, within the R4DS YouTube page, you'll have playlists for a bunch of the um, book clubs actually and several of them are still active and you can watch the videos um, even if you can't join for one of our if you can't join for one of our meetings you can always go on youtube and watch the video and get caught up if you want or even if you just want to you're at home and want to watch the youtube and then kind of participate but not like come to the meeting cool too but of course, we want you to come to the meetings. <laughs> um, all right, let me see what else. Okay, yeah. So the other thing is, um, one of the important things is in the README for the 
GitHub repo, it tells you kind of like steps on how to present. Um, so yeah, there's about 11 steps. And one of the first things that's pretty important, setting up your GitHub and Git, Git and GitHub to work with our studio. John actually made um, a repo about doing that. So this is also something to look at before you start working on, like altering the notes. And also just, I suppose, a note on the notes. Since the book club's been running a while, um, if you want to present, but you don't necessarily want to make any tweaks to the notes themselves, that's completely fine. You can like present the notes that are there as is. You don't necessarily need to do anything. If you want to do something additional, that's cool. But again, this is the club for beginners. So, well, it's a club for everyone, but like if you're beginning and you don't kind of feel comfortable doing some stuff, it's completely fine. Okay. Okay. So, one of the, I'm going to show you what it will look like if you have like the book club um, already loaded on your computer. And then, assuming it works properly, I'm going to try like downloading, like setting up our specific book club on my computer. So I made a fork of this. Uh, let me close that. So I made a fork of this book of this um, GitHub repository, and and then I made I made a local copy on my computer. So that's this. Um, yeah. That's this folder here, book club slash template. And then if I go and click this one, the R project, it should open up that book for me. Okay, so yeah, so this is what it will look like when you've already gotten you forked the repository and you've set up your local copy on your own machine so a couple of things here this is like the readme file which is kind of like that same file we saw on the repo um on the repo or repository like on that first page and then this for example is like one of the example um RMD files or R markdown files. And I don't even know if this one has a website. Okay, so there is no website for this one, but I think I should be able to knit it so that you guys can see what it looks like. Yeah, so basically all of these files help you to make this that site um so yeah i'm gonna try and put it side by side yeah so yeah we have this where it gives you that title here where you have the learning objectives and this little sign gives you that bullet where it's like these are nice to have but not absolutely necessary then you have your slide your first slide and we made that with the double pound sign and it's called it slide one and you have more bullets and right here it tells you to add other slides or sections you can just use those two pound signs and then you while we're making or ideally the slides we want this to be slides like versus having like just copying the book itself word for word and then last, there are the meeting videos. So this book club, well, this is the template book club. So there aren't any videos for this specifically, but I'll go back and show you on the actual, like the repo for our book. And you'll have videos for like all of the cohorts um, before us. And eventually it'll have 
the videos for our cohort as well. And yeah, so that's what I wanted to show you with that. Okay, so the other thing I want to show is actually getting the book, like getting your own version of the book. Okay, so when you go to the GitHub repo for the book, there's up here where it says fork, and then you'll see it says fork your own copy of R4DS book club slash R4DS. I actually, yeah, I actually already have a fork of it, so I can't make a new one. So I'm just going to go to the one I already have, but I want to do this kind of from scratch. So I'm actually going to delete this just to show you starting everything from scratch, kind of following the, um, following the instructions as um, stated on the book club repo, sorry. Okay, so I just deleted my version of that. And I'm going to go back to the, the notes page. Again, I'm going to click the Octocat. And this is the book. Again, this is the repository for the book. So if you go to how to present, the first thing it tells you to do, or first thing was set up Git and GitHub to work with RStudio. Next, use the, um, next, you can create your own copy of this repository by taking this line of code and putting it in the console of your RStudio. So, okay, this one's a brand new, brand new um, window of RStudio. You see up here, there's not a project yet. So I'm gonna paste what I copied from the repo into my console and hopefully it'll set up my fork. Okay, so yeah, it's right now it's cloning the repo. Okay, so we have our fork. Next in the instructions, um, oh, opening the project. So it automatically opens in a new window and you'll see up here that says book club slash r for ds Okay. Next, I'm going to go back to those notes to see what to do next. So we open the project, and then we want to create a branch for our work um, to avoid confusion, making sure that do the latest changes, and also avoid, <laughs> yeah. And so I'm going to, again, copy this text. And I'm going to put it in the console for this project. And like noted, you want to replace the, my name with a descriptive name. And let's see. OK, use this. I'm going to call it LG, oops, LG for Lydia Gibson um, chapter one. And I'm going to make, oh, actually, first, I just want to show you um, this Git, um, what is it called, Git pane, this Git pane here. When you see right now, it says we're on the main branch. After I run this code, there's going to be a branch that's going to be called LG slash CH1. Okay. Oh, and yeah, if you see right now, then now that is the branch that I'm working on, LGCH1. It's going to be really important to do that every time you're working on the book. Otherwise, you'll get merge conflicts and it's a pain in the butt. Honestly, when you have those in the end, like you'll usually just end up like deleting the repo, like deleting your version of it because it's a pain, especially when you're just starting out with GitHub. Okay, so another thing you're going to want to 
do is do this, run this next line of code in the console, and it'll install any packages used by the book that you don't already have. Okay, so I'm gonna run that. And yeah, it's gonna ask you if you wanna download the packages. I hope it's not so many. I didn't try downloading this one ahead of time, so hopefully it's not too many. I should have the majority of stuff already downloaded. But yeah, so back to this. And basically, after that, you can begin editing the chapter files. So for example, if I want to do chapter one, I'd open up the introduction chapter one here and begin like working on this file. And again, a lot of it's already done. So I probably don't need to change anything, but it'll be something I can use to, um, if I wanna, like when I'm presenting, I can present from here, um, from the RStudio ID, or again, I could press this knit again, and I'll create that, um, that other page that we had before. And it's working, hopefully. Yeah, and okay, so yeah, when I do that, it pulls up, pulls this up. And again, so like each of these um, slides were like a new section where again, where we use those double hash, hash marks or double pound signs to do that. Oops. And yeah, so that's kind of how to render the book from your own computer. And I am still downloading. Yeah, it's still downloading stuff. But I can show you on the other, that other one. Oh, is it finished? Okay, it is finished. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the last step when you're um when you're working on the chapters, say you want to use a package that's not that no one already has been using and regarding that you can find what packages will have used by looking at the description file um so yeah so these where it's imports these are all the packages that are already downloaded but say you want to download or you want to install a package to use like for the book um like if you just do the like you want to use this so that not only is it on your computer, but it's going to be in this description. So anyone else who renders the book will be able to render it. Um, because say I just did like library or install that package of Pac-Man, library Pac-Man, and then used it. Like you can do that and it'll work on your computer. But then when you try and um, merge it in GitHub, you're going to get like an error message. It's happened to me a lot. And basically, I've had to go back and do like this code so that um, my package was in the was in like the GitHub repo and the book could actually render. So let's do this. Um, I already have Pac-Man installed, but I think I think if I do it, well, yeah. So Pac-Man is required, would you like to install it? Um, press one for yes. And yeah, we just added Pac-Man to the import. So now like, right now this is only on my computer, but say when I send it to GitHub, um, like the main repo, um, then anyone, like the book will render and anyone who uses future versions of the book will be able to like use Pac-Man and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, did I do that wrong? Version Pac Man is not available. I probably didn't mean Pac Man. Either way. Okay. So, okay. So that was five. And yeah, um, 
I won't go all the way through this chapter. I mean, number eight is basically when you're done with your edits and want to send um, those changes back upstream to like the main repo to be merged into the notes. Um, but yeah, that like with regards to that, you could always go to the help channels if you run into any issues and the folks there on the Slack will be able to help you. Um, let's go back to my notes, see if there's any other thing. Okay. Oh, and I guess the last, I think I already mentioned it, I guess. Um, let me do it like this one. Okay, so yeah, and again, the meeting videos will be like available on YouTube and they're also like posted in the back of like at the end of each of the chapters. So here you have like co cohort five through well, cohort five through six at the moment. Um, but yeah, so even our videos will eventually be loaded there as well. Okay. And yeah, so I think that's mostly what I wanted to show today. Um, but yeah, again, so next week we'll be starting with chapter one. I'll present chapter one. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this during the week, folks can start reading it. And if you want, you can go over like any of the, I don't think there are problems at the end of this chapter. There are not, but I think like, uh, like a good number of the chapters will have exercises. So like this one has some exercises that you can do. But yeah, um, now I think I'll stop sharing if I can find out how. Okay, I don't wanna share. Okay, and we're back. Okay, so now I figured like if we could do like a couple introductions um, to get to know everyone, we're gonna be together for at least half a year reading this book together. So I guess I'll start off. I'm Lydia Gibson. I'm one of the mentors and facilitators with the RFDS online learning community. I just graduated in May with my master's in statistics and now I'm working at Intel as a data scientist. Um, I really love R. I just um I joined this community like two years ago now, and it's been really fun learning and just interacting with folks like not only on the Slack but even on social media like LinkedIn or Twitter. Well, used to be Twitter now Mastodon, <laughs> um, and then even like getting the opportunity to meet people in person, like my our studio our studio concert. Um, but yeah, so that's me. Um, I don't know. I can do like popcorn, popcorn Ken. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ken. Um, like Lydia, I was a recent grad master's graduate getting my master's in statistics from California State University East Bay just recently, May 2023. Um, I've been part of the R for DS community for about um, say a little more than about half a year though I, I learned about it through Lydia who's been pretty active on this and who introduced me to this community I mean so far I've been a part of one book club and so far I'm loving it you know getting to meet all kinds of our users from different experience levels and being able to learn about all kinds of cool technology related to R. um yeah yeah so I guess that's it for me and I'll just popcorn it to um, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah, same as Lydia and Ken. Uh, I just graduated for a uh, master's also in statistics, but uh, my focus was in bio. So I'm more into the pharma and um, hospitals and all that has to do with medical data and uh, amazing enough, uh, the path is going towards R. I mean, we all know that the FDA uses uh, SAS, but there's slowly a lot of companies are requiring people to know also R. 
and I actually find R nicer than SAS. <laughs> um, uh, I got trained on both well, during my master's, but I kind of was a little worried about joining the book club, uh, but Lydia uh, had been so successful that I'm here, and it's so nice to be a brand new student <laughs> with all of you. So nice to meet you, everyone. And I don't know, maybe Jeremy? Hey, Jeremy. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, okay, um, Jeremy, I'm not a student. I'm actually working in a hospital. And it's actually my new job. I've been in the hospital for six months. Uh, in terms of our experience, uh, I only started taking it more seriously like two years ago. And progress has been a bit slow these few months because uh, I have to adapt to my new job. But after my probation period, I thought maybe I could start learning new things again. And for now, I'm just very grateful that I'm able to join another book club because of the time difference in Asia is a bit difficult to join all these book clubs because they're all started at a very wee hours at night in my area. So for this book club, I can manage to find some time to attend. Hopefully I can be able to attend for the next few weeks as well. But we will see how because actually at this timing it's just like 8.30 a.m. So it's like I'm going to start work soon after this book club. Uh, I just hope that I could be able to commit to it because it's a very... Uh, good opportunity also to get to know new people as well. Okay, thank you. I like the popcorn. How about Tiffany? You're smiling. <laughs> Hi guys. Um <laughs> I'm Tiffany. Um, I actually was introduced to these um, book clubs um, recently by Lydia. It seems like you've done a lot of good work, Lydia, so good for you. Yay. <laughs> um, and I work as a clinical trial coordinator and recently added a statistical support at UNC um, and still debating. Um, so I recently actually transferred from LSU and I'm trying to transfer to either um, NC State starting in spring while working or um, or I was recently accepted to UNC's public health data science program. So trying to figure out what I wanna do, um, most likely going to be transferring to NC State in the spring because classes start too soon for me. Um, uh, but yeah, so I'm taking this just to, um, I don't know, brush up my skills using R. Um, I don't know who said that they liked um, R over SAS. I agree with you as well. Um, I think one of my PIs uses um, actually SPSS, um, which is not really um, efficient, but um, I um, also use um, something called um, REDCap at work for like managing data and access. Um, uh, Cause I also help with like the data management process as well. And then we also use like SQL. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that. So I'm just trying to, um, you know, brush up more by our programming skills by taking this. Nice to meet everyone. Okay. Um, so tell me I'm gonna choose you. <laughs> so tell me I also went to school. <laughs> uh, hi everyone. Um, I recently graduated from um, Cal State East Bay with a master's degree in statistics. Um, with Lydia, Ken, and Sarah. Um, thanks to Lydia, this is my second book club, and I'm excited to learn more about R for data science, and I hope I will have a good time with everyone. Thank you. All right, Mateo, how about you? Sure. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I don't have a camera right now in this computer. I will try to join from the other computer, the next session to put my camera. 
Yeah, I'm an economist and I'm doing like my second career in statistics. I live here in Colombia and I've joined this R for, for data science like community a couple months ago, but I really liked it. I really like how everyone just be helping everyone. <laughs> and these book clubs, I really like the idea of it, of like meeting weekly to read a book. Uh, I, I've been uh, like leading a book club, the Mastering Shiny right now. And, I, and I'm in some other groups. I think it's pretty cool. So yeah, <laughs> nice to meet you everyone. And how about Uton? Have I pronounced it correctly? Uh, yeah, hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I am based in Buffalo, New York. I am part of the their data science master's program. And as part of our program, we focus a lot on Python, but um, R is also kind of huge for data science. So um, this is me just getting my feet wet. I am excited uh, to be here. Thanks for joining. And Andrew, last but Hi. definitely not least. <laughs> Hi, my name is Andrew. I'm in the same time zone as Jeremy. So it's uh, early in the morning, but not too ungodly. So it's okay. Uh, I am mostly doing teaching and research. Uh, and I, my experience is with base R mostly. So the reason why I wanted to do the book club is so that I could get exposed to tidyverse. And then uh, at the same time, uh, meet some new people and then see sort of like what through indirectly find out what the learning difficulties could be so that when I do the teaching myself, it would be, uh, I have sort of like, how should I put it? Anthropological experience, <laughs> something like that. So that's it. So hopefully we have a good time together. Thanks, Lydia, for leading the group. No worries. Thanks for joining. But yeah, I'm like super excited and looking forward to reading this book with you all. So thank you so much for joining today. Um, again, if you're like super new, there's the resources that we that I posted in the um, Slack channel for the book club. And feel free to reach out to me on Slack. I go on Slack entirely too often. So more often than not, you'll be able <laughs> to reach me. Um, but yeah, so I will see you all again next week. Same time, same place. <laughs> all right, have a good rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you are. <laughs> bye, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.